Hey everyone, Spencer from Geek of Spades here, and today I'm bringing you yet another tabletop gaming review. And today we're talking about really the only game from Games Workshop that I consider worth playing. That being The Hobbit, or Lord of the Rings strategy battle game. Now, I'm also a fan of War of the Ring, which is the mass battle system they did for Middle Earth, but it's a lot harder to get into. I did a review for it over on my other channel, so if you're interested in uh, finding out more about that, go check that out. But today I want to talk about the skirmish version, which is now currently The Hobbit. Now, depending on when you're watching this, this rulebook might actually be out of date because they release a new version of the rules with every movie. So with the second Hobbit movie coming out in December, this might not be entirely correct. However, we will, of course, do a comparison video and talk about what's changed between the two, although I don't suspect it'll be that much. This is, simply put, a fantastic game. It's a solid system, and it's really fun, even when you're getting completely stomped. And all the armies seem pretty well balanced. I haven't seen anything that's overtly broken or stupidly undercosted or stupidly overcosted. It all seems really well done, and I suspect that's because of the rumored uh, fact that Games Workshop is not allowed to cock up the system because New Line Cinema will not let them. So, you know, good on you, New Line. So in the strategy battle game, instead of having a big army, you have a small contingent of units. Basically, you have a officer, you know, a hero, as they call them. Uh, this, this can be a named character, uh, or it can just be some generic dude, like a captain. And they have a warband, which can consist of up to 12 models. And you can throw cavalry in there, and you can mix and match. So you don't have to have an all-cavalry warband, all-infantry warband. You can have... Uh, cavalry and infantry mixed together. You can even have cavalry and monsters and infantry mixed together if you really, really want to. So yeah, there's a lot of flexibility in this game, which is a huge selling point on top of the already fantastic line of models from The Lord of the Rings, and that obviously continuing with The Hobbit, because the Perry brothers are, without a doubt, the greatest sculptors in the world, and anybody who tries to argue that is simply wrong. One of the things I really like in this game is how armies are built. Like I said, you have your warband and you can have up to 12 guys, but there's a bow limit, so you can't just spam arrows. It's one third of your army can have bows. And it's a little confusing trying to, you know, figure that out. So to make it easier on you guys, check the uh, liner notes below. There's a link to a Excel spreadsheet, which is a army builder for the game, and it has all the stats and it figures out your bow limit and your break limit and 25% of your models and blah 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 blah. Another thing that that army builder has uh, is all the stats because you might be noticing that I'm using the mini rulebook that comes from the Escape from Goblin Town starter box and the reason for that is because this is the only one we have because no game made by Games Workshop is free from their idiocy. You see the main rulebook for this game, the core rulebook that has the exact same rules as this but then just has like a, a hobby section and some unit stats, and not even a lot of unit stats, mind you, because there isn't a lot that came out with this version of the game, is 85 freaking dollars. So if you're really interested in playing this game, eBay. So one of the cool things this game does is heroes, whether they be a named hero or generic hero, all have three extra stats compared to other units. They have might, will, and fate, and these can be used to alter dice rolls or re-roll dice or do different stuff like you can spend a point of might to use a heroic action so you can do a heroic charge or heroic march or you know what have you and it can actually let you interrupt your opponent while they're trying to do stuff so it does add a bit more of strategy to it i guess is fitting because it's a strategy battle game it can be a little tricky trying to remember what they all do and how they all work and there are a lot of heroic actions and really only named heroes have enough points to utilize those more than once a game. Your generic captain has like one might, one will, and one fate. So they're not going to be doing it quite as much as someone like Aragorn or Theoden or Lurtz, who is, you know, the guy who killed Boromir. Now, this game is good. However, it's not perfect. No game is. And there are a couple of things I don't like about it. The first being that shooting is piss weak in this game. I mean, honestly, most ranged weapons are like strength two, and most guys are 
anybody with any kind of armor is like defense five or six. It's really hard to kill someone with arrows, which makes armies like Rohan seem really difficult to play because riders of Rohan should be just riding around circles, riddling their foes with arrows. But you can't do that in this because it takes like five attempts to kill a single dude unless you are the luckiest person in the world when it comes to rolling dice. Now, I don't want shooting to be overpowered where somebody can just sit there and gun line, but God, it's gotta be a little bit better than what they have in here. The fight stat is another thing I don't like. It's almost completely worthless. All right, maybe it's not worthless, but it's just really weirdly handled. See, you have your fight stat and it's only used in tie breaking. So when you fight somebody in melee, you do a duel and you roll however many attacks you have, they roll however many attacks they have, and whoever rolls highest wins. If you tie, the highest fight score wins. I just don't like it. Fight could have been handled so much better. It should be doing so much more because melee is the main focus of the game, obviously. In War of the Ring, fight gave you bonuses for doing different stuff, so if your fight was higher than your opponent, you got extra dice when you attacked. I wish there was something like that in here. This, it would make guys with higher fight values just really feel like they're better combatant. Overall, the whole dueling uh, fight system isn't super awesome to me. Uh, I do prefer, you know, having stats play into it a little more rather than just, you know, whoever gets the luckiest roll wins. It's not bad and it's still pretty well handled and the game's still fun. It's just, I feel like it could have been handled a little bit better. Maybe if the fight stat did something to your die roll. Maybe if it was your die roll plus your fight stat or your fight stat gave you extra dice. If it was higher or what have you, I think that would make melee combat in this game a whole lot better. So yeah, in the end, this gets a definite recommendation. Me and Jeremy both play it and we love it. It's fun, the rules are simple, the game goes pretty quick. And really, everybody loves Middle Earth. It's the de facto go-to classic fantasy world. So you get a lot out of it if you're a big fan of that. So that's the Hobbit strategy battle game. Be sure to keep it here, not only for more reviews, but also for the comparison between this and the new version that'll be coming out in the second movie, as well as battle reports and maybe even learn to play if Games Workshop decides not to sue us for it.